it's Melissa. In this video, we are going to get the Xtool P2 laser engraver and cutter set up. So this thing is what I would consider the business addition to the smaller uh, Xtool M1, which I also have videos for. That is more of a desktop craft hobby uh, type a laser engraver and cutter. It is wonderful. I have it. I love it. But if you are um, a small business and you are going to be engraving, uh, this is probably a better option. It has, for example, a 55 watt um, laser as opposed to the M1 that has a 10 watt. So the power, the speed of this um, is really more designed for small business. So let's get this set up. So when you get this, it's going to all come um, in one box. Now, most of the contents, um, the power cords and everything like that, the instruction manual, everything like that is actually inside. Okay, so we're gonna open this up and we are going to follow step by step to get this set up. Now, one of the steps is to, and I cannot make this up, this is the first time this is a, I have ever set up a cutter or uh, an engraver or a printer where I have to pour antifreeze into it. Okay, so don't worry. We're gonna get through this together, but I do wanna warn you that is one of the steps and it does come with the machine. Okay, let's get started. First thing we are going to do is to open up the lid. Now, when you take this out of the box, the, the lid doesn't wanna stay shut. That's because there is this piece of tape over here. When you're looking at the machine um, on the left side, that is basically stopping the machine from locking. So you do wanna remove that, okay? So it says remove, so you'll know what to remove. Okay, and then all of the contents, as I mentioned, the instruction manual, the quick setup, all of that are inside of here. So just be careful as you take this whole pack of contents out. Now I am gonna quickly show you what's actually in here so that you can just confirm that you have everything, but you've got power cords, you've got a USB cord, you've got um, some clamps and a small screwdriver. You have a funnel. This is going to be to pour that antifreeze in, which I uh, you know, told you about. Then we have some test materials. And this is actually two pieces. There's more down here, okay? So tubing, this tubing is to connect to um, the air filter or to extend out a window. I am going to be um, uh, attaching this to connect to the Xtool air filter, which I also use with my M1, so I'll just be switching it back and forth. But I don't have to switch the tubing because each one comes with its own tube, so uh, we'll, I'll show you how to install that. Uh, this piece in here is the tubing clamp. This is going to um, go around the top of the tubing and make sure that it stays connected to um, the little filter extender on the back of the machine. And then you have this antifreeze, which I'm telling you, I have set up dozens of printers and cutters and engravers, and I have never had one come with antifreeze or require antifreeze, but here we are. Okay, so we got everything out of there. Um, now, the next thing that you are going to do is there are a series of um, small metal pieces. If you are familiar with the M1, it has those triangular prisms. Uh, that is to lift the material up. So these actually is something very similar. It's a whole series of them, maybe like 20 or 24 of them. They have That is already pre-installed on here. However, you have to remove at least most of them, because there is contents below. Okay, so the cutting mats and different things like that are actually below those, so make sure you pull them all out. Okay, once everything is out of the laser, you also want to turn this emergency stop to reset it, okay? So that's gonna pop out, and then you're just gonna turn it, and it will reset. Then you want to make sure that the laser itself moves in all directions freely. So take a look while you're doing this to make sure that this is moving correctly and that you can pull everything all the way forward. Again, you're gonna be looking at the tubing to make sure that there's no damage or anything uh, to that. There's also a sticker on here that you need to remove. So we will remove that as well. And then the, that you saw that lid just clamps back on there. It's, it feels magnetic. And then I am going to put these metal um, holders back in. So there's a side that's more pointed. That goes up, face up. The more squared off side goes down. Put them in every other position. 
Now you're going to move to the back of the machine. And this whole piece here, this whole back, it's an L-shaped piece, needs to be removed. So there are four screws that you need to loosen to remove that. So you're going to take the screwdriver that comes with it. It comes in two pieces. The piece that looks like the um, uh, Phillips head screwdriver, you're not going to use that. You're actually going to use the other side. So when you put it together, put the Phillips head down into the screwdriver, okay? And then you're going to uh, use this to remove these four screws. I missed a screw, which is easy to do. There's a screw in here in the vent area. There's a fifth screw. So there's five screws on the back. There's a series of screws up here as well that also need to be removed. Not these screws, okay? You don't wanna remove those. You wanna remove where it says remove the screw. It's literally telling you um, where to remove the screw. So there's one here. There's two, three, four, five, six of them. Do not remove the lower set of screws. Those screws actually use I think the Phillips head screwdriver. These that we're using are using the hex. So you'll know if your hex screwdriver doesn't fit, then you're trying to remove the wrong screws. I gotta be honest, this is not, this is not ideal. It's un, I mean, I would have preferred to have to just install this piece instead of it coming, but I, or maybe, you know, but I understand, I guess, for shipping. But I don't like disassembling products and before I can use it, but this is part of the setup. Okay, these screws are much smaller, you can see, so just be careful. The other thing you wanna be careful about is you wanna make sure that these screws don't fall down it will be very, very difficult to find them. And you don't want anything loose in the machine. I'm actually sticking my screws to that sticker that came so that they all stay together. Okay, once you get all of the 11 screws out, you need to take this off. Now, I will tell you, I had a lot of trouble getting this off. There is a piece over here right above the emergency stop. If you can get that up and out, then you'll be able to pop the rest off. So you kind of have to pop up and out at the same time. And this piece will come loose. As you can see, I even had it loosened and now I'm still struggling a bit, but it will just wiggle enough that it will come off of there. Um, it's this piece over here that will probably uh, give you some trouble. These are what your is was uh, the screws from the inside, okay? So if you're having trouble, focus on this area over here, popping that out, and then you should be able to remove this entire cover. Okay, now you can prepare to pour the... Uh, antifreeze or distilled water or a mixture of both into the um, tank in here. Now, before you do that, you need to reference the chart in the uh, quick guide setup. Now, I live in Southern California where the low temperature throughout the year does not get below zero degrees Celsius, which means that I'm actually not going to use antifreeze at all. I'm going to use just distilled water. According to this chart, I need 1100 milliliters of distilled purified water. So I have my measuring cups here and to make it so that it's not all the way to the top, I'm actually gonna put 800 milliliters in this one and 300 in the other smaller one. And then we'll use the funnel to pour them into the tank. and then the funnel will go right in here and then we'll pour in from there. So you will have some combination of um, water and distilled, or excuse me, you'll have some combination of distilled water 
and antifreeze. Depending on the low temperature in the region that you live in. So again, you'll get that information from the reference chart. Now, before we replace this lid back on here, we want to power on the machine. That is going to pull that water partially through the tank and then we are going to need to add slightly more. So the power cord connects back here. I'm gonna plug that in. In order for the machine to actually power on and to do anything, including pull that water through, you need to make sure that the emergency stop is pulled out. Otherwise, there is no power to the machine, although this button here may be illuminated, okay? So make sure this power stop is completely out. Um, you will have other issues if that is not pulled out during the setup, including the fact that the water from that tank won't start pull, full, um, filing through. But when I check the water level, it is slowly going down. So it's slowly pulling into the line. You're gonna wait about 30 seconds to a minute, and then you're basically going to top the water off. Now, before we replace this lid back on here, we want to power on the machine. That is going to pull that water partially through the tank, and then we are going to need to add slightly more. At this point, you are now ready to put the, to replace the cover and put all five of those screws back in the back and all six inside. Remember, the long screws are what goes through the back. The short screws are what go uh, from inside. Okay, now you are ready to connect the hose. So the hose, again, is for uh, the filter or to filter out the window. So you're gonna do this the same way as the M1. You need to look for this piece right here. Whoops. And that part will go on to the round uh, filter connection on the back of the machine. Before you connect that, you wanna make sure that you have used this piece, squeeze it so that it can go, so that the tube can fit through. This is what is going to keep the tubing connected to the connection piece. And then the very last step is to connect the USB cord. So that goes over here on the left side it's covered by a sticker that you'll want to remove and then you will connect the small uh, USB C to the import or you know output and then this piece will go to your computer okay so once you've connected the USB then you are going to need to download the software you can then go up and tell it that you want to um, connect the two machines now what you will see on your screen is the inside of the P2. And in this case, you are now pretty much ready to go. Okay, so now this is all set up. I will say the P2 does take longer than the M1 to set up, but once it's set up, you do not need to be doing some of those things like taking that back piece off and filling with the water or the antifreeze uh, regularly. You will have to do that to maintain it, but you don't need to do that every time that you use it. So now that it's set up, we can get started and get going with our first laser engraved. So make sure you check out that video. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos um, on my X tool. Um, P2, the M1, and all of my um, other machines, cutters, printers that we use for hobby craft and small business. All right, you guys, see you around.